All right. So just to recap quickly, what we've done here is we're going over a scenario, a hypothetical about Coca-Cola, where some news comes out, CEO has an affair with the secretary, uh, Coca-Cola stock drops by 10%, more or less. Everyone thinks the company's screwed. And because the risk has gone up, so have the option premiums. The ones that used to be $5 are now $7. And we did an example of the put side and the call side going from $5 to $7. Individually, if you trade them, your break-evens are 7 bucks. But if you traded both of them, meaning you buy a straddle or sell a straddle, the break-evens are $14 because it's the call plus the put. So you have this range now. And what this range is, is what we called the implied move. Meaning the market is saying over the next 30 days, we expect KO to be plus or minus 14% from where it is now. All right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So the implied move is calculated by combining the at the money call and the put more or less. Okay. And it gives us a range. And that range is the amount that we're expecting the stock to move over the or the market is expecting the stock to move over the next 30 days. Cool. Yep. All right. We're going to right. shrink this down and move it over here. So to make this uh, profitable, you'd have to correctly predict the volatility hitting outside of that range. If you were buying options. Yes. And buying both. Yeah. So what that looks like as a PL is this. Right. So let's say this is a 0% return. Your PL would look like this, where this is 114, this is 86, this is 100, this is our max loss, and this is a like a profit zones. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically, what we're saying is uh, if the stock stays within here, we're going to lose money. If the stock goes out here, we're going to make money. Okay. Now, here's the thing, right? What is the most important question that we should ask ourselves? If, and so this is the, this, this structure right here, the straddle or what we learn in bronze, which is the iron condor or iron fly, all the same, is basically trading this. The implied move versus our forecast of move. This is what the market tells us is going to happen. But the market's not on anyone's team. So what we need to do is we need to say, what do we think is a fair range for how much it'll move in the future? If we think that this stock will move in this range, then we think that this structure, this trade is cheap because the market's saying it's going to move in this range. We think it's going to move more. So we mm -hmm. would buy the straddle. But what if we thought it was going to move in this range? Well, the market thinks it's going to move out here. We think it's going to stay inside here. If it stays in here, the people who buy it are going to lose money. So the people who sell it make money. Okay. So the entire game of trading becomes a comparison, right? One second. Sorry. The entire game of trading becomes a comparison between what the market tells you, what you think. In okay. options, what you are comparing, what like, and we can start with this so you can get more complicated down the road and do more unique things. What we are comparing at the core of it all is the implied move versus what we think the stock will move. Okay, that's, that's all we're doing. Yeah. 
That's it. You, you can run a profitable option book if you understand this is a core concept and then have a basic understanding of what makes something move more or less than implied. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So remember this, right? Like if we, if we go back to that structure, right? So like this is this is the, the, the most important lesson. And, and if you do this today, if you understand this concept today, you can, you can start running. I'll give you uh, one repeatable, very good strategy to run that you can start running right now. Very simple. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So <clears throat> this is what happens when you buy an, buy a straddle, right? Call this a long straddle. Pardon my terrible mouse writing. I try my best. Uh, so long indicates that it's um, farther out on the strike dates. No, it just means that you're buying options. So this is when you 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 buy a call and you buy a put. And let's just assume it's at the money. Okay. If you do this, so so long means you're buying a call. Yeah, exactly. You're buying a call, and in this case, you're doing you're buying a call and a put. So forget about individual stocks or individual mm -hmm. calls and puts. We are only looking at two trades now for the time being: buying straddles and selling straddles, or iron condors. You can think about it as iron condors. It's the same. Okay. Okay. You're either buying them or selling them because the core of option trading is you need to be trading that implied move. The cleanest way to do it is with those structures, right? We are saying, will it be inside this range or outside this range in the next, let's say 30 days? If we think it'll be inside this range, we want to sell them. If we think it'll be outside this range, we want to buy them. Right. Because if we buy them, then we're buying the extra. If we're selling it, then we're selling the contract that other people haven't noticed the difference. I think you're, you're generally understanding it here. Yes, I, I would say you're correct. And and by the way, it I, I'm trying to like repeat it a few times to help make it click. The mm -hmm. number one way that it'll click is by placing some trades and yeah. seeing how it works. I, I feel like on I had, um I think it was like fifth grade or something. I was like having such a hard time with, um I think it was division. And then it just like, I did a couple examples and it like, it clicked to the point where I could do it like in my sleep. Exactly. Like I actually remember the day, like I think I had a similar thing where like math went from being something that was like just on paper to like being a real world concept for me. Wow. Yeah. It was like the, it, it, it was like a, a borderline spiritual experience. Like I was <laughs> like, what just happened? <laughs> math, man. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, okay. So the question becomes this, what would make it move? Like, like, how do I know if it's going to move more or less than the implied range? Mm -hmm. Are so you the asking? question, so, so the, the, the way that we can think about this is this comes down to the core of running a profitable trading strategy, which is in trading, there is no free money. I wish there was, but there isn't. And the reason there's no free money is because on the other side of your trade is actually another person. You can think of trading, like you remember like you've seen the images or maybe seen some movies where it's like people standing on the trading floor, like yelling, like oh, give me a hundred of these, a hundred of that. Like they're on the phones, like all this crazy shit. Mm -hmm. That's because they're actually finding people to do transactions with. And all that's happened is our online brokerages have made it so that they can facilitate those trades on our behalf really quick. But there is either a hedge fund or another retail trader or a high frequency firm or, or a market maker or someone on the other side of our trade. There is, there is another conscious being there. And because of that, and if everyone's trying to make money, that means nobody's trying to give away money. So there's no free money because if you're making money, someone's losing money. Mm -hmm. So even if you're getting free money right now, someone's saying they're going, what the hell's happening? Why am I losing money? And they're going to fix it. 
So the question becomes, how can I get paid? If we look at this long straddle, what this basically says is this, you can risk a fixed amount of money to potentially make unlimited money, right? That sounds great. That sounds great, doesn't it? Here's the other side of it, right? If you sell a straddle, it's you can make a fixed amount of money to potentially lose unlimited money. That doesn't sound so great, does it? Not so much. So if you asked 100 people which of these two scenarios they prefer, 99% of them are going to pick this, right? 99 out of 100 will pick this. But here's the thing. For every single person that wants to do this, somebody needs to be there to do this. Because if you want to buy this, someone has to sell it. So if somebody's taking on this risk, how, why, why on earth would they do that? Sounds counterintuitive. It sounds counterintuitive until you think maybe the fixed amount that they're getting paid and the likelihood of a significant loss work out so that over time, they are actually able to run a profitable business Providing people with this. Okay. Just like the lottery, right? We all know like you could, if you buy a lottery ticket, you have the potential to make a million times your money. But the lottery is still a very profitable business. You go to a casino, you have the same story. When you buy insurance, you're paying $100, $200 a month. And if you crash your car, you get paid out $40,000. Why on earth would anyone do this? Well, it's because, first of all, it's actually not, un it's theoretically unlimited, but it's maybe more like something like that. Like in the end of the day, the, the hundred dollar stock is not going to a trillion dollar market cap or, you know, a trillion dollars a share. Mm -hmm. there, there's like, a realistic boundary there. Exactly. There is a realistic boundary. So now if we look at it like this, we could actually run an equation, right? Where we say, we want to be making money on average, right? Yeah. So our profit per transaction slash trade is equal to the probability of winning multiplied by how much we get if we win minus the probability of losing multiplied by how much we lose. So let's fill this out quick, right? Let's say uh, our probability of winning is 60%, 70%, let's say. 70 times, and let's say every time we win, we get $10 minus, right? All right, so it's, it's actually, uh, if we go here, it's 0. 0.7 minus 0. 0.3 times, and let's say we lose 20 every time right? Just because I, I don't have an exact example in my head, right? Yeah. Right. So in this case, it would be like seven minus six, I think. Right. Equals one. So in this situation where we actually have a negative risk reward, meaning the amount that we collect up front every time, or the amount we make when we win is less than the amount we lose when we lose. But because of the likelihood of it happening, we actually still have a profitable game. So it becomes now, it's like, how often in a row can we expect to lose? And let's say I have a bankroll of $100 or of, uh, well, let's say $1,000. How much should I bet each time in order to maximize my return on this game? And this, each time in order to maximize right? my return on this game. I have this game over here where I have a 70% chance of winning and a 30% chance of losing. Every time I win, I make $10. Every time I lose, I lose $20. And let's say I have to bet, uh, I think the bet size here is like, I guess $20, right? 
minimum of twenty dollars. I could do twenty dollars. I could do forty dollars. I could do sixty dollars. Right. That's insane. Why? Why is that the minimum? Well, because uh, every one unit, I'm risking twenty dollars. Okay, so it's like a sports bet. It's like, oh, you bet twenty dollars on the team winning, but they're like the favorite. So if you win, you're going to make ten bucks. But if you lose, you lose your twenty bucks. Okay, so I, I could lose in increments of twenty. Exactly, but you could like place ten bets and lose an increment of two hundred. Okay. If you place more bets at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the idea here, right? We are now looking at a game where we, we're basically understanding that even though, right, if we were to go all the way back, even if we look at this and we say, you can risk a fixed amount to make an unlimited return, this might not be a good decision depending on how much that fixed amount is and the likelihood of making an exponential return. Now, the amount that this fixed amount is, is not arbitrary. It's not like just randomly came up with. It's the amount that it needs to be in order for somebody to take on this risk. Supply and demand. There's a lot, if there's a lot of demand and no supply, this fixed amount is gonna go up until some there is enough supply to satisfy the demand. So what this means is on average, because nobody wants to take on this risk or very few people, but mm -hmm. lots of people want this exposure. We see that the fixed amount is on average high enough that it provides more compensation for the option seller than it does potential for the option buyer. In the same way where somebody pays $200 a month for car insurance, but the insurance company is still profitable because all those premiums add up in a way where it is more than the cost of when they have to pay out for the cars. Selling volatility, wait, sorry, go on. They're providing a service. They're providing a service. So in the options market, we can do the same thing by selling options. Okay. Even though we are now on the opposite side of this and our exposure looks like this. Where we have a fixed return and potentially unlimited losses, right? This is the yeah. same way of like, you know, collecting $200 in premium from a car and potentially having to pay out $40,000. Even though that's what our exposure looks like. The fact that people need it and want it means that we can charge a price that even though once in a while we will have to pay out this, we are going to make money in the long run by, by, by providing this service. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So the game simply becomes this. Trading actually can boil down to this. Where is someone willing to overcompensate me for holding a risk on their behalf? Where is someone saying, I don't care how much I have to pay, give me it. Or where is someone saying, I'm willing to pay for coverage here? For example, a basic option selling strategy is to sell puts on the S&P 500. The reason is because everybody who runs like a hedge fund and is long equity, they hedge their portfolios in the S&P 500 by buying puts, which means there's a lot of people buying them and you get compensated about 11% a year for selling them. And that's profitable for them in the long run. Yeah. Like once in a while, if the S&P goes down, you got to pay out, right? If you're selling puts on the S&P and the S&P goes down, you got to pay. But that's why you're getting paid a premium. And the premium is enough to justify those payouts for the option seller. So the person who's buying it, they are willing and happy and conscious of paying a premium, but they are willing to do it to mitigate the risk of a drawdown in their portfolio 
the option seller knows the risk that if the S&P goes down, they are going to pay out and provide this coverage, but they're willing to do it because they're getting paid to do it. You are providing a service. Okay, I'm following. Perfect. That is the core of all trading. Now, obviously, you can get into more complicated stuff, but at a base level, if you want to run a profitable portfolio, if you understand that concept, you will be able to ask yourself questions like, why am I getting paid here? How do I diversify my risk so that I can really capitalize on getting paid this premium? Is there ways that I can like diversify the types of premiums that I'm collecting? Is there multiple types of services I could provide? You can start doing all this stuff and that's how you build up your portfolio. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting. What we're going to do then is I'm going to give you a basic strategy you can run here that has a good return. It's not like the world's best return. It's a good return. It, it has a really high probability of profit. So you're going to make money most of the time, but once in a while you'll have a big payout. That's the way that mostly strategies will go with short volatility or short options, selling options. Um, it's one that I run. It's one that a lot of our community members run. And it takes five minutes a week to do. And it'll give you a really good understanding of trading the implied range versus the forecasted range or your, your, your thought on what the range should be. Cool? Yeah. I feel like getting an example hands-on is really going to help a lot. Okay, this is called the weekend ETF premium trade. I know it's a mouthful, but whatever. And that's not actually, I don't know, this is the name I made up for it, okay? <laughs> Here's the hey, idea. I'm not judging. Yeah, I know. I, dude, the company's called Predicting Alpha. Clearly, I'm not that good at coming up with names, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> I did see, I was like, that sounds kind of, you know, um, I don't know, a bit pretentious, but I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, honestly, I felt very pretentious when I first made this company and then I got humbled very quickly. <laughs> um, okay. hundred percent. Right. Uh, it was a, a very necessary business lesson for myself. Um, okay. Let me explain the strategy to you. The way this works is this over the weekend trading is halted. Meaning if you are in a position on Friday, you cannot get out of it until Monday morning. If something bad happens on the weekend, you are going to not be able to hedge or exit. So you are going to feel the full force of any damage that occurs. Awesome. You can't get out. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. But you're also open to receiving new news that... Um can come out for I sure like could be good news yeah right but the idea in short is there's no liquidity this means if you are an option seller you are holding risk over the weekend in short that's what it means mm-hmm so there are tests that have shown selling an option on Friday and buying it back, closing the trade on Monday morning is very profitable because of this liquidity risk premium. The willingness for people to pay for protection over the weekend because there is so much time for something bad to happen where they can't do anything. Okay. Running this strategy, to run this strategy, sell an at the money straddle on SPY, IWM, QQQ, or uh, I can't remember what you got. SPY or IWM or both. And these are the markets, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, on 
on Friday with the expiration of Monday. Okay, sounds simple enough. That's it. So this is the weekend risk premium trade. I do this every weekend. Uh, ben does it every weekend. Uh, a few guys in the group do it every weekend. And so far it's worked like 15 out of 16 weekends that I've done it. It's been pretty cool. Um, obviously, I know why I'm getting paid, right? There, there will be a weekend where this shit will blow up. You know, <laughs> like something's going to happen and I'm going to pay it. One out of 16. Yeah, I, honestly, and not even that because uh, the one time it did, it wasn't profitable. It, it wasn't even that big of a loss. It was like pretty small. Um, but there will be a weekend where like there will be a huge move. Like S&P will be down 5%, you know, and I'll lose like 10 to one, you know? And what would that depend on? Just it, uh, just the, the market going down. Like, so it, it would depend on S&P, let's say it's trading at like three 380. I don't know what it's trading at. Uh, I can't remember. Um, and let's say on Friday, we sell the range of 379 and 381 right let's just say it would just depend on it like like s p goes down to like 360. so Ouch. something like um a, a lot of people losing um i don't know faith oh, in right. the spy or like yeah the, like a the huge economy. amount of selling comes in like like basically cpi numbers come out all these uh, all this economic data everything's gone to shit a bank defaults and goes bankrupt. Like all this bad stuff happens. Markets are going to tank and you are going to pay out. Okay. But that's why it's short volatility. So the nature of these strategies is most of the time you're going to win. You're going to have a nice small winner, very consistent, very nice. And then once in a while, you're going to pay out. Okay. Once in a while, you have a big loser. <clears throat> but we have to remember the reason that you get the small winners is because of the big losers. If the big loser never happened, nobody would pay you for coverage. That's fair. It's like if cars never crash, nobody buys car insurance. It's because of crash. It's because of the perceived risk. It's because of the real risk, the risk that exists, that somebody is willing to pay a premium, pay more than they should to alleviate the fact that they even need to think about that risk. All and right. that's how option selling strategies work at a uh, at its core. All right, I'm following. Cool. So what we got to do from here is we'll keep it really simple. Tomorrow, you can do it in a cash account or a paper account. Like you know, I'm not here to tell you where to actually put your money, but as a good experience, running this will show you placing these trades seeing how they do over the next couple of weeks will show you how a short volatility strategy generally works. You'll get to experience it. Uh, is this something I would be able to do on Robinhood? Because I, I'm not on uh -huh. the computer a lot. I usually just keep my phone on me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can. I actually, I don't think Robinhood allows you to sell naked options. Okay. I, so, I do have Charles Schwab, but um, it's kind of a pain to log in, but I yeah, it out. you know what? You just have to do it at the end of the day on Friday and in the morning on Monday, I would say do it in the Schwab account and then Schwab should have a mobile app, dude. If they don't, then like you should get another room. <laughs> it, it, it might just be me. That's just my login stuff. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, you know what? Try and figure it out. There's a couple guys in the group who use Schwab. You can just ask in the questions chat if, you, if you're feeling stuck. Like, I, I don't use it. I'm based in Canada, so we're very limited. Um, what, do, what do people in America usually use? It, uh, in, in Canada or in America? In America, since that's where I am. Yeah. Uh, so most of the time, they'd be using interactive brokers, Thinkorswim. Schwab is, pro is uh, popular as well. Okay. So... Um, I I would say the best one is think or swim on the, on like videos and stuff. I think you, um, 
maybe sometimes we'll show like on the options academy like the different programs and i noticed that they'll show like different information or <laughs> like yeah yeah robin hood i have never seen like a preset option to um like do a straddle for example like yeah straddle, no i i would stay away from robin hood it's not really designed for running these types of strategies um the best one that you can use is thinkorswim i would highly recommend it as a, a great great starting platform it's it's not too complicated to learn it's got some really great features that complement running option selling strategies um, and it, it'll set you up really well between the terminal the community and uh thinkorswim you will have every tool you need there'll be nothing else Wait. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh,